Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this spectacular episode of Transmissions, we learn how international scalpers are changing the Japanese toy production market. X Transbots reveal prototype images for their G1 scaled Motomaster, and a new third party company, Banana Force, drops into the market with an RID Optimus Prime. Today is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2019, and this is episode 323 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that still doesn't understand Brexit, but wonders why they can't just reboot everything and start fresh. Works in comics. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how you doing? And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. How's it going? Let's talk Transformers. All right, and uh, we all start off the show like we always do with donations. Thank you to all of our lovely Donatrions. Uh, We don't have any new ones this week, but we always thank the ones that we have because you guys keep the show going and you keep us here. You are our favorites. (laughs) And we appreciate you. Uh, If you would like to join the ranks of our Donatrions, you can go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support, and that's where you can find out, find links to contribute either on Patreon or PayPal. Uh, as always, you got lots of perks, and one of those perks is being automatically entered into our monthly Toy Hacks drawing. So uh, we had our March drawing. We are doing the draw on the last day of March. Uh, the episode's not out until April 3rd, but this is still technically <laughs> within March. So uh, No fooling. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, if you are if you are a Transmissions Donatrion, you are automatically entered into this contest. If you are at the duly appointed supporter of the Transmissions Podcast level, you get two entries every month. Uh, if you are not a supporter, you can still enter. You just have to send an email to contest at transmissionspodcast.com during that month and send us a picture of one of your Transformers toys that you would like to get stickered up. So... I uh, just got to do that and uh, you'll be entered in the contest. So, uh, but if you are already a Donatron, it's really easy because you don't have to do any work. You just, uh, we just pick, put your name in the hat automatically. So one of the perks of being a member. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get to it. We've got the March drawing to do. Jeremy's back. So we've got uh, his lovely assistant here to help us, right? I wouldn't say she's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> she should get a big head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Computer, are you lovely? Hmm, I'm not sure. See? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know she's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she's beautiful on the inside. <laughs> All right, uh, so Jeremy, could you please ask your assistant to give us a random number between 1 and 109? Computer, give me a random number between 1 and 109. Your random number between 1 and 109 is 33. 33. Kevin Horn. Good old Kevin. Long time supporter. Yeah. Met him at TFCon Chicago 2016, I believe. Mm Mm-hmm. Go Avis. (laughs) Yeah, he's he's easier hockey fan. Why would you be cheering for a car rental company? It's an old running joke. I think we've forgotten the origins of it. Oh, no, it was the it was the the hockey. He's the he's a fan of the. Is it the Avalanche? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> he says go Avs, and I think Yoshi misread it as Avis. And that's right. The rest is history. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. You had to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes are always funnier when you have to explain them. Oh yeah. All right, Kevin. Well, Kevin, the the joke may may no longer be funny, but <laughs> you've got ten dollars to spend on uh, some stickers for your new for your Transformers. So, congratulations, good job. Carol will be in touch. Also, if you are um, if you are not able to uh, donate regularly, you can still help support the show by buying merchandise from our store at transmissionspodcast dot com slash shop. We've got lots of Transformers themed merchandise. We've also 
got some shirts uh, designed by a uh, friend of the show and transmissions artist K Girl, who did all of our uh, portraits uh, for the show and our logo. Uh, and you, we've got her shop. Uh, we've got a link to her shop as well. Uh, didn't put it in the doc, but it's in, it'll be in the show notes. Don't worry. Superstar K. Superstar K. All right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I know we're, we're, we're it, it, it's it's rough working with us, Daryl. Sorry, I mean, I, I know we're we're not on your level, but we try. <laughs> gonna gonna write a letter to the doctor association. <laughs> not not all of us can just show up and you know talk in the microphone, Daryl. Some of us have to think about other things too. <laughs> Charles is probably performing surgery right now, so I got to give him credit. <laughs> well, maybe you can petition to have him take one of my doctorates away. Uh, and, you know, I'm working on it. I'm making a list. <laughs> Before you bring you down to my level here, no doctorates. All right. Well, uh, enough tomfoolery. Let's let's get into the show. Starting off with some toy news. All right, I'm starting off the show, and I'm going to talk about X Transbots. Uh, they revealed some stuff this week, which showed their progression on their Stunicons, their masterpiece scale Stunicons that they're working on, and they're looking pretty good. Uh, the first one that they showed off was Death Wish. I love the name. Uh, this mm. one is, I want to, I think it's Wild. No, it's not Wild Rider. It's the other one, Dead End. That's uh, yeah, dead end. So it's in. The, it's it does. Name. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, I honestly, I actually think Death Wish is a better name than Dead End. Yeah. So uh, he is a uh, a Porsche, I believe. Uh, I forget the actual model name. I think it's like a three four or a nine four. Uh, sorry, a nine thirty four uh, Porsche. But I'm probably wrong. I, I forget my my uh, early eighties Porsche uh, models. But uh, um, anyway, the car mode on this thing is superb. It looks beautiful. I can't tell if it's got rubber tires or not. I think it does. But uh, yeah, it uh, it looks really, really nice. And uh, there is a pre-order price on it already. So let me just bring that up here. I'm not really prepared on that, but I'm going to get there. Uh, it is sixty nine ninety nine on uh, at Big Bad Toy Store, so it looks like all the limbs are actually uh, that price. Sorry, check that. Their flip out, their Wild Rider is fifty nine ninety nine. So there you go. Yeah. So anyway, this Death Wish guy looks really really good. And uh, before I toss it over to everyone to discuss, I want to add in the second topic, which is also X Transbots, and this is their Motormaster figure. Figure. This is Gravestone, and another great name from these guys. This one here uh, is still in a prototype stage. They've showed off just uh, pictures of him, just in the flat plastics. Um, so there's been no paint detail or any kind of stickers or anything like that so he's looking rough but uh, still you get a sense of scale you get a sense of how he fits in with the rest of his team and you get a yeah you get a a, a really good sense of what he's going to look like uh, also you get to see where the die cast is on him which there is tons uh, his whole chest is die cast, thighs are die cast, there's bits of his feet are die cast. This guy's going to be heavy as hell. And as far as scaling goes, uh, they have made him actually taller in robot mode than MP10, which that's pretty accurate. I think he was about that height in the G1 cartoon. There's no pictures of his truck mode here, but I believe we've seen him before. There's been a lot of Stunicons coming around recently. They've all looked pretty good. Now, guys, I'm going to open it up. What do you think of the uh, X Transbot Stunicons here? We've got uh, Death Wish and Gravestone. Charles, Death Wish looks really nice. Uh, I, I, I mean, I know this is I, it's a it's a close up picture. Those the all the sections and panels look a little weird on the car mode. I mean, I'm I'm sure like in in person when you're holding it in your hand, it's probably not that big a deal. But the picture makes it makes it look more noticeable i guess okay the car mode looks nice the robot mode looks nice it's a nice scale compared to the um the datsun brothers i guess there with the with blue streak there yeah 
The only thing, uh, the only thing that's bugging me, and this is a really severe nitpick, is the um, the visor, the purple visor. Just looks. I was going to bring that up too. Yeah, it looks. Okay. It, it looks like he's got bug eyes. It's it's a little bit weird. I mean, mm. but other than that, I mean, it, it's a it's a really it's a really nice figure. Cool. The motor master. Uh, I mean, it's it's not fully painted yet, but uh, it looks nice too. I, I guess it, is this the is this the one where like the the um, the trailer is all the combiner pieces and then the robot. Is I would just think the so. Cab? Yeah. yeah, I would think so. so. Yeah, I still I w- I wish someone could figure out how to make Motor Master like a jo- <laughs> the cab and the trailer together like, you know, I mean it, it's a it's a nightmare in scale, but you know, that's the that's what he was originally mm-hmm. in the G1 toy, but yeah, it's cool. Right on. Um just before we move on, the Porsche uh is a Porsche 928. I was off by 6. So <laughs> simple math i was close yeah i mean you had the right company yeah oh no the company is easy um but uh but jeremy what do you what do you think of these offerings from x transbots i i really like death wish uh similar comments to to charles on the visor i'm i'm wondering how much of that is like the lighting in the pictures because in some of the ones where he's looking to the side it doesn't look a little, as bad Mm-hmm. But the one where it's like front on, it's like bug eyed in the visor is it, very weird. Yeah. So I wonder if it's just really shiny purple. Yeah, it could be. So that's something that's probably just, you need to see it in hand. I'm sure there's going to be alternate heads as it's a third party figure. Someone's going to make another head for it. But other than that, I mean, the car looks fantastic. The robot mode, it's pretty solid. Although the, the chest is very plain. I'm not sure if the original toy was like that, but it seems like something that, like, some stickers or, or something couldn't help. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Motor Master, I think, is a bit of a mess. Okay. The feet, I, I do not like. Like, the the picture that, that like, showed up when, when we put the link in the Discord, that partic- that picture in particular, showing how, like, the, the foot moves to make it look a little bit more, um, you know, action-posed look. I don't know. I just don't like it when it's like the foot comes apart visibly like that. I mean, I'm I'm sure with all that metal in there, it'll be structurally sound. Otherwise, you know, you you wouldn't have a picture like that. But mm-hmm. it just it. I don't like the way that looks. And similar to like the the Combiner Wars Devastator, where we had the elbow issues. Mm-hmm. Similar things there, where it just it doesn't look like it's a, a strong you know, solid joint, even if it is, it just doesn't look like it. And aesthetically, it's just not doing it. For me. Yeah. Uh, and then same thing, like with the, the, the waist, I don't know if that's just, you know, how they're posing him there with, it, it just, it looks like he's in like two different pieces and being able to do that. I'm like, is, is this figure just going to snap apart? I don't mm-hmm. know. It just, I'm not a big fan of, of that type of joint, I guess. But I, I like how much die cast they have in there. You know, being taller than MP10, this is going to weigh a lot. Oh, yeah. That's that's nice. But I guess I've also just never been a huge fan of Motor Master in general. I don't like the box head thing. So I mean, we'll see when we get a more final picture with paint and, and more details. A plus for the name. I don't know, maybe C, C minus for the execution on the toy so far. But, All right. But the other one was just looks fantastic. I have to agree with you on the Motor Master. The the waist, I didn't notice it until you pointed it out. It's doing the same thing that, that uh, MP36 Megatron does, where he just kind of pivots about the front of the waist there and basically just kind of comes apart uh, 90% of the way and creates the kind of the, the ab crunch, sacrificing any kind of aesthetics for the back. The, the feet there, that that is also kind of an issue. If you see, he's only kind of pivoting on one joint there. So if mm-hmm. that is, if that ever got loose, you'd never stand him again. Um, right. So that is a concern no, I as well. I worry about like easily breakable pieces, you know, transform it and sure. uh, do something wrong. And then you got all that weight on that one joint. Mm-hmm. Right on. Well, those are the two things that I brought to the show this week, guys. Jeremy, what do you got? 
Uh, I have an update on uh, the Banana Force uh, MPL-01 Red Sharpshooter, which is their version of RID-2001 Optimus Prime or Fire Convoy. And when we talked about this at uh, going over the TFCon third-party panel, I wasn't aware at that point that this is a non-transforming figure. So it, it still it looks really good to me. Uh, we have a lot of great prototype pictures, more than what we saw in the in the panel, but this is a, a fully, if this is a non-transforming figure, there are alternate hands and alternate head, different weapons and stuff, but this, I mean, I guess they can make it look so good because they don't have to worry about the engineering on how to make this transform. It does look like it has rubber tires, though, for what it's worth, although one of them has a line which kind of gives me shudders thinking back to, <laughs> you know, just how, how the original tires crack. Uh, I just, I really wish that we would get a new version of of this as an actual transforming figure. This will be uh, released probably late September, so um, maybe in time for TFCon DC, don't know. Um, I can't remember exactly when that is. It's late October, like the last weekend in October. Ah, good. Yeah, in my mind, I'm, I'm between two conventions right now, so my mind is just... So, yeah, I mean, maybe this is something we can see on the show floor. Charles, what do you think of this? You seem to like the statues and non transformers. <laughs> it, it looks good. It's a good representation of the character. But, yeah, I am bummed that it does not transform. But um, I am not like I, I mean, I did watch the R.I.D. 2001 show back in the, you know, the early 2000s. Um, in 2001. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's in the, I guess it's in the name. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I mean, I I never I never really got any of those toys, so I, I guess I I don't have a um, a deep connection to them. But uh, I know I know you're a you're a big fan there, so hope this makes you happy. But I would prefer it to be a trans you know transformable. But mm -hmm. but it does I mean it is does look good, very poseable. So if you if you want a statue or a you know a a poseable action figure, figure, yeah, exactly. <laughs> An action master, if you will. <laughs> oh, yeah. It could be that. Daryl, what do you think of this guy? I, I'm also disappointed that it's not a transforming figure, because uh, uh, I wanted to see you buy it. And I would have. And you would have to have, And now yeah. since it's not, there's, there's, they can't prove me wrong, because it's, it's no, not No, there's nothing holding you to it. It's still, it's still very nice looking. Very detailed. I like the idea of the, the, you know, the changeable hands, which, I mean, isn't that a... Isn't that a Gundam thing? They give you different hands and stuff. Although yeah, I think so. It, it's it's cool. Um, I like I like the way it looks. It's it's very neat. Um, I'm less inclined to be interested in in the uh, the combining Ultra Magnus figure as well now because it doesn't mm -hmm. you know transform. But uh, they still look cool, man. Although being non transforming, you can't expect the the price to be super high. Although We've seen the, it does uh, have diecast in it. Yeah, that's true. We've seen the ones coming out of uh, the 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 ones they just do. What are their names? Uh, I can't remember the company that does them now. They did the drift and the tarn, and they're working on Star Saber. Uh, Flame toys. Yeah, them. Their stuff's really super expensive, and they don't transform either. So, um, so we've seen really high expensive ones of those. But yeah, but they're also officially licensed. So that's true. You're paying yes. for that too. Yep. But yeah, um, it still looks good. Well, one more thing that uh, I wanted to bring up this week, and it's kind of a discussion topic. Um, I ran across this article um, over the weekend about how international scalpers are changing the Japanese toy production market. And the, the article itself is talking about Gundam, but there are you know similar issues, I'm sure, with on the Transformer side. Particularly, I you know you hear about people that are going to Amazon JP to buy uh, masterpiece figures and and things like that. And this is is talking, I guess, more from the the Japanese side, like Japanese fans not being able to get what they want because people outside of Japan are snatching them up and in some cases selling them back at a, a markup. And I, I am sure that the Transformers fans are, are in the same boat. So I just wanted to maybe talk for a minute about this. Uh, I don't know if you guys buy much from Japan. Um, I know I, I don't 
I have like a couple times, but it's not something that I do very frequently. Did you guys read this article and uh, any thoughts on the issue? Uh, well, I only got a chance to skim the article, but I I do not tend to buy much from overseas. I, I mean, I think uh, unless it's something that, you know, we can't get here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in general, I think, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I, th- I think the wor- I, I think these companies have to realize that it's a global marketplace now and they should really, mm-hmm. I mean, one thing I think, I mean, I understand like the whole, um, like not wanting to have a, like a lot, not wanting to overproduce and have inventory left over that you have to get rid of. So, I mean, I really think they yeah. should, they should try to like, like if you, if you really initiate pre-orders early ahead of time, let all the super fans who are really plugged into, you know, following your company online and, and interested in, in the fandom and everything, let them put their pre-orders in before production starts. And, you know, you guarantee that there's enough for everyone who really wants it, then produce, you know, based on your market research, whatever X additional percentage to have some stock available for people to buy when it comes out. And then, you know, I, I think, you could solve a lot of problems that way. I mean, I don't yeah, know. I, mean, I think that's, that's, I'm, I'm kind of thinking along the same lines. I mean, there, it is so hard sometimes to get like, a, you know, you get like the Takara mall exclusives and things like that, where you are as, as a non Japanese fan, you're dependent on someone buying it, marking it up and selling it back to you, which sucks. Mm hmm. And it's just, I think right now they're dealing with like licensing deals where Takara can't sell a toy directly to someone in the U S like a transformer in particular, because, you know, Hasbro has to do it and Hasbro might not bring, you know, a masterpiece death, death or something. You know, if they did that, Hasbro right. might not see the, the need to bring that to their audience. Daryl, as, as someone that lives in a country that absolutely hates people to buy stuff online and, and have to pay the ship. Um, <laughs> w- what are your thoughts on this? I have bought from, from Asia before and sometimes it might be cheaper than buying from the States. <laughs> uh, well, the shipping's more, but the product's cheaper, but yeah, it's uh it, it can be appealing because you do get the opportunity to buy things that don't, haven't been released in the U.S. or Canada. I do prefer to buy it in person, mm-hmm. but I, I I have, like, even uh, outside of toy toy buying, I really don't do a lot of online shopping. Yeah, I don't I don't have an Amazon Prime account. I, I got tricked into getting one by Amazon one, one year, and then I, I shut it down immediately. I wasn't paying 70 bucks for... For Amazon Prime, so personally, I think the article. I mean, I look at it and I see the word scalper as a toy guy. I'm more of a, into the word yeah. scalper, and I, and I get that's more of a trigger word for me anyway. I've been accused of being a scalper, and I've been I've been done in by scalpers. I, I get uh, I've been accused of being a scalper because I used to work at Toys R Us, and uh, and I would put things aside for myself uh, before the store would open, and then get. Uh, accused of of buying and reselling. Well, they were all for me. I wasn't selling them to anybody else. So um, people didn't like that. So they would make make noise. But um, but I've been done in by scalpers a, a number of times myself. And it's it's in a global market. It's it's fair, but it's just a dick move, right? Yeah, I mean, it it sucks if that's the only way you can get the toy you want. Right. So, I mean, the most recent thing that I keep seeing is is all the stuff that's going to Ollie's um, mm-hmm. for super duper cheap and people going in and buying the Titan class stuff for 50 bucks a pop and leaving there with all of them. Yeah. That- I get that you'll be able to tack an extra 25 bucks onto it and and make a make that and, and get ahead. There's opportunities for these to become kids toys at that point at that at 50 bucks a shot for a titan class figure that's in the range of a kid getting their hands on it yeah you know and and that is like someone's best christmas ever 
Of course it is. Yeah. So when I see somebody walking out of there or a picture, cause I don't have an Ollie's here. So when I see pictures of people walking out of there with, with all of those things, like six to 12 Trypticons recently, I was getting pretty upset, you know, thinking that, yeah, okay, buy a couple and then, you know, maybe pass them along to people that you know that, that are looking for them, but don't buy them all. Yeah, they, I mean, they're maybe retailing buy two, for, sell one to cover your costs and yours is free. There you go. That's a good idea. Or you can say, this, you know, yeah, do something like that. That's that's fine. But but if there are two on the shelf, don't buy both of them. That's a dick move. It's just a dick move, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, scalping is is just it's it's one of those things that that kind of it's it's something that comes along with the collecting industry, right? People who who want to get into commodities but don't have the 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 funds to do it can look at toy collecting as a commodity and can get into these things quickly because you can make a buck real fast by buying something on at retail and reselling it real fast comic books is exactly the same Mm -hmm. but um but yeah so you just these people they 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 spend their time learning what's coming learning where it's going to be when it's going to be there uh in their own neighborhood right and uh, and they'll go in and get it for for cheaper but yeah i just that's what i saw when i look at the article if if companies are changing the way that they they do things to uh to kind of to kind of combat scalpers i can i can get behind that but it's probably going to make things more difficult for me to find things in the store yeah well i just i think these limited runs i think as the market has expanded to worldwide the companies need to reevaluate exactly how limited these runs need to be. Mm-hmm. And like in one instance, it's in the article, the company, like after scalpers just got like all the stuff from the, the limited run, they actually did a whole nother run of the figures. So the fans could get their hands on it. So I think if you're having that problem, you're not making enough, you know, yeah, you want to make a, a figure that's, you know, highly sought after, but you don't want to anger your fans because they can never get the figures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway, it, it's an interesting article that we had um, linked here, and yeah. we'll have it in the show notes. It's I, something. I, wanna... I mean, I'm going to comment one more thing before we move on, and that's okay. years ago when Transformers Prime was just starting. I thought that that's what that's what uh, Hasbro was doing when they released uh, Transformers Prime First Edition. Uh, I thought that that was a limited run. It was going to be one and done. They were going to get their first that wave out and release the six deluxes and the two uh, Voyagers and the gift set or the special uh, double pack, and they were going to be done with it, and that was it. But they kept releasing it over and over and over and over and over again, still with the same the same packaging, saying first edition. And and that that killed it for me at that point. I thought, you know what? You had something here really special at the first uh, release of it. First edition mm-hmm. was really fun and really exciting. And they were really good toys. And they were fantastic toys. And then when if they were going to re-release it, take first edition off the packaging. Just you know, they don't have to print that on there. Change right. the cards up or something like that. But but when they kept re-releasing under that same same uh, banner then it was uh, it was done for me but they i thought that that's what they were doing and uh, and though for those first few weeks when the, that first edition stuff came out those those figures went through the roof mm-hmm. we that's when i was working at toys r us at the time and we had people coming in every single morning to see if there was new stuff on the shelf yeah i, I remember uh, i only managed to get i think one or two of those toys mm-hmm Anyway, if you have thoughts on this, um, let us know. Send us some feedback, and you know, I'm interested to hear other people's thoughts on this article and you know, experiences that, that you might have had trying to get a Japanese toy from outside uh, of Japan and what you've had to go through. So, um, with that, uh, Charles, what do you have this week? All right. Well, uh, we've got images of. The latest uh, Takara Tomy figure in their Legends line. This is LGEX Big Powered. 
So uh, this is a this is a set of figures that are repaints, uh, but they are um, uh, homaging characters from the uh, what was it Transformers uh, Zone? Yeah, Transformers Zone. Uh, so this is Die Atlas, Sonic Bomber, and Roadfire. And uh, Die Atlas is a remold of the uh, Overlord slash Sky Shadow Titans Return figure. And then uh, uh, Sonic Bomber is a Misfire uh, remold. And then Roadfire is the Twin Twist remold. These are our first like full color images of these figures, and uh, I got to say they they look pretty good. I mean they they do they are well done in that in the sense that they do not you know they they um they are heavy retools or remolds of these figures, and uh, they uh, they look like they're you know they're uh, their counterparts from G one. They look pr- they look pretty nice. And they do combine into a super spaceship thing, <laughs> and uh, and then they have it's a technical a, uh, term. <laughs> yeah. And you can even put you can uh, they have a they have a, a some pictures here where you can combine another twin twist and top spin figure on their sides to make an even bigger spaceship thing. <laughs> and also in ro in uh, they have a combined robot mode as well. Uh so yeah it's a, I mean this is uh, this is cool if you're a fan of the of the Japanese uh cartoons and uh particularly these these characters from Transformers Zone I think these are um these are really well done uh remolds of these Legends class figures and in addition to the the figures we've got pictures of all the media that comes with it so we've got the they've got a pack in comic uh and also an online comic that uh that is like throwing in a bunch of characters from all over the place not just the big powered char- uh uh characters but they they've got uh uh some G1 some G2 some siege figures it's it's you know it's the art is showing off lots of uh lots of different characters all mashed up together in this uh this kind of big uh, battle here but i don't know whether the pricing is on any of these links here but i just looked it up on bbts and there is a pre-order up for it there for 159.99 Ooh, seems like a good f- price for all the stuff i think getting. that's what we kind of worked out when we were looking yeah. at it yeah i guess overlord was what 50 and then the two um the other two two, two, deluxes. two deluxes so those would be maybe 20 a piece so yeah, I mean it's a little. Uh, I guess like fifty percent markup, sixty yeah. percent. If you if you convert yeah. it to Canadian, it's right on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, so yeah, if you're if you're into the the Japanese uh, figures, I think this is this is a nice uh, a nice modernization or or bring you know bringing those G one characters back uh, into the the modern toy line. Uh, so Daryl, are these uh, are these figures interesting to you? Well, I have all of the original molds that they did. Uh, mm-hmm. Not the original Big Power. That would be that would be pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> the ones that these figures are molded off of, and um, I'm I really like the way that these look. The coloring is is really done well. Um, but I, I I just I can't I can't go in for that kind of money for these things mm-hmm. yeah it's beautiful though what about you jeremy um it's it is kind of priced out of my range for my interest in these characters which is very low uh, i mean dialysis is pretty much the one i have the most exposure to through the comics but mm-hmm. it looks fantastic i love the colors i mean you're getting you know the very colorful uh, figures that they were in late g1 all the what they've done with the um, reuse of these molds has been really fantastic. But really, what, what I really like about this is the box art. It's a great you know homage to the the Japanese G one box art. You know, but with doing what they have to do now with like new logos and stuff. But it's a I think it's a fantastic looking package. And I um, you know if I had one hundred and fifty dollars, I could 
blow on it, I, I would, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I that would not be a very smart use of my money. <laughs> You'd still be ten dollars short. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Plus shipping and tax. You don't have to borrow some money. No. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it looks fantastic, and for for the people that are fans of Zone or of these characters, I, I think you know they'll be very happy with it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, that's my toy topic. So that'll wrap up our toy section. So let's move on to some trips to the store. This is where we show off all the awesome Transformer stuff we got this week. We do this as a video that you can see on YouTube in beautiful high definition. And we will show you all the Transformers themed merchandise we picked up this week. Uh, But you can also keep listening to the podcast and listen to us describe our purchases in loving detail as the show continues. Uh, But you should really pop over to YouTube later on to to see everything as well. So without further ado, trips to the store. All right, let's uh, let's get into the stuff we got this week. And I'm going to go first. So uh last week the first postcard arrived this was from yoshi (laughs) this is uh i complained because this is not a transformers theme postcard but this this was just the the beginning it was a preamble yeah uh so second postcard this is from number one derek donatrion number one derek and this is a, a Mega Man uh, themed postcard with Dinobot as Mega Man from Beast Wars. And then all the Predacons are the uh, Robot Masters. So, cool. Uh, let's uh, read what Der- number one Derek has to say. Yo, Big C, here's greetings from your number one donator. Number one Derek. <laughs> we miss you, big little guy. Hope to see you soon. Derek and Sean. Uh, Sean is Derek's wife. Thank you, Derek. Also, go to hell, Derek. Uh, (laughs) Got another postcard. This is RC. Uh, Or, yeah, I should do this way. It's a nice uh, image of RC. I I actually don't know who the artist is for this RC. But... Very cute RC. Yeah, it is a... a, She's very... She's uh, she's smiling as she's got this blaster, you know, (laughs) big-ass blaster she's about to shoot you with. But she's smiling. Yeah. Um, Makes her happy. (laughs) uh, Very anime-esque, I would say. Uh, On on the other side of the postcard, got a little bit of artwork. Uh, I believe this is uh, Little Formers, Matt Matt Moylan. So uh, Yoshi paid to have some custom artwork on this postcard, and uh, I guess, let me see, uh, yeah, I can't find your donator button, that's what it says there, and that's a nice little picture of Starscream. It really is black and white, it can be any of the secrets. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to say it's Starscream. Yeah. But. Even misspelled donator. <laughs> There's no right way to spell it. <laughs> I might have heard from uh, from one from number one Derek that there are many more postcards were done at the at TFCon uh, LA this a uh, uh, couple weeks ago, but Yoshi's apparently holding them back, so I guess he's uh, he's he's trickling them out. Uh, trickling. He's committed them to the bit. Yeah, clearly. Also, I did uh, pick up uh, Rise of the Combiner Wars booster pack. So I have not opened it yet, so I thought I'd open it on camera and see what card I got. So let's do it. Here we go. I almost bought one of those this week. We yeah. don't have those here in Canada yet. No. Tar- yeah, you, you guys got rid of all your targets. That's where I've, I've seen all the Transformers <laughs> cards here. My comic shop had them. Oh, really? All right. Sure is crinkly. Just trying to be careful that I don't bend the cards. All right, here we go. What do we have? All right. So. Yeah, I'm playing quite hard. <laughs> Warpath. Cool. There's his robot mode, and Ow. there's his tank mode. Uh. I don't know. Uh, he's an RTT45. I don't know if that's rare or not, but it's cool. Yep. It's a rare. All right. Starts with R. 
Uh, we also have some of the battle cards. Let's see what uh, we got in here. Hmm. Sure is crinkly. <laughs> all right, let's see. Rapid Don't read them. Don't need to read them all. Just read the rare. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid conversion. There. Uh, it's not uh, the rare. Rare is going to be the third last card. Ooh, this one's for you, Daryl. Predicon, Predicon Enigma. <laughs> Ooh. So I guess you... your rare? Yeah. There yeah. you go. So this is, uh, I guess, if you get all the Predacon cards, you can use this. Uh, if you have Predaking on the battlefield, draw a card. Then you may play an upgrade. Yeah, a bunch cool. of other ones. So there we are. And yeah, Warpath. Warpath is fun. Doesn't all look right. too strong, though. Yeah. His power is two? <laughs> uh, three. Oh, huh. no. Oh, no, two. You're right. Two, two attack, three defense, and six... Or six defense, six life, and three defense. So, yeah, bang, zoom. Cool. My that's fun. Gun is not too powerful. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. So, oh wait, no, <laughs> sorry. Comics. Oh wait, there's more. <laughs> I got comics. I did get comics. Transformers number two. And GoBots number five. And I, I did get the Ron Joseph uh, Transformers number two cover. That that was the one that we, we kind of uh, picked last... Or at least Daryl and I picked last week. And then GoBot, I just got the regular cover for GoBots number five. That's it! So, uh, Daryl, I know you have a few things, so what did you get? I will start with comics. Um, I, too, got Transformers number two. The, the the good cover and GoBots number five, the the one of the other covers, not the skilly one. On to toys. Pick this guy up this week. This is G1 Dreadwing, Dreadwind, Dreadwind, Dreadwind. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um. And uh, he's incomplete. He does not have his Power Master or any of his guns, but. I've had a hard time finding this guy, so I snagged him when I found him. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking for guns for him and a Power Master um, and the other guy, Darkwing. So, <laughs> Darkwing <yeah>. Duck, <laughs> when there's trouble, you call DW. Let's get dangerous. <laughs> um, yeah, so I picked him up and... Thanks to some looking around the city, this thing has started uh, arriving, but uh, I think everyone else kind of figured out that it was arriving because I had to f drive to the other end of the city to find it, and this is Transformers Studio Series number 35, Jetfire. Oh. So, is that a movie toy? It is a movie toy. This is the other movie toy that I decided I was buying, so... So you got the, com the combined uh, what is it what did what did Eric say last week Sonic Corpse mode? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this will be kind of fun to do. I haven't opened them yet, so uh, I'll kind of mess around with these guys. So I do have the other one here. So he's a leader, which means he was seventy dollars here in Canada. Um, wow. But uh, much bigger than the Optimus. Yeah, so he's a Voyager. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about him. He's uh, he's pretty massive. Um, but uh, yeah, literally every single because they've started showing up at EB Games, which is our GameStop, and uh, I basically had to go to every single EB Games in the city. And they said, "Oh yeah, we got that guy in, um, but we've only got the Megatron out of the box left. The other so the other one's gone." And I said, "Well, I don't want the Megatron. I want the Jetfire." And they said, "Oh well, let's uh, let's see if there's anything else in, in the other stores." And they the, one guy called every single one of them in the city, and they said, "There's one here at this lo uh, location, but it's all the way across the city." I said, "Get him to hold it. I'll be there." <laughs> <laughs> you don't want him to get there and be like, "Oh, we just..." Sold it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, he he looks fun. Definitely, probably will not keep him in his jet fire mode because uh, I really don't like the look of the the jet fire figure, but. Uh, I want the Optimus with all the guts on him, so I'm going to do that. But that's uh, that's what I got this week. Um, we can skip Jeremy, right? He didn't <laughs> doesn't have anything. <laughs> He's, he didn't have time to do any shopping. Fine. He was at a convention, so 
Yeah. I did a little bit. That's all. That's it. Uh, I'm I'm done. Back to oh. the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold it. I've got a few things. So, like you said, I was at a convention. You gonna show I off your have, press pass again? You already did I, that. I'm showing off my press pass again. <laughs> that's um, the back. That's the back. <laughs> I was at C2E2 at my Autopod Decepticast events to Cola thing um, button on here. My transmissions button somehow fell off, so I just consider that free advertising for the show. Because it's in someone's foot? So Yeah, <laughs> someone will step on it and pull it out and realize what that. So before I start, I will show I did get comics this week. I got the um, cover A of um, Transformers, and I got the skilly cover of GoBots. Now, C2E2, I am going to start with um, Transformer stuff after I show the program. Which, um, I got uh, the um, comic book for kids cover of Transformers number one, and I had a chance with, to interview them. That is, um, I'm working on my video right now with all my interviews and stuff. This was 40 bucks. The proceeds go, um, they, they are a, a registered a 501c3 charity that their goal is to put comic books in hospitals and cancer c- centers for kids to, you know, kind of get away from what they're going through. And, you know, and you know, the guy said, um, the guy, Mark Weiss, who's the founder and president, uh, he said that they even work with local cosplay groups to, you know, so you could have, you know, Captain America come in and give you comics and, you know, really awesome stuff like that. So, um, I got a few copies. Um, I think Daryl and Charles both said he wanted one and then, uh, my friend Jimmers wanted one. So I got four copies and, um, if you watch the video, you can even see the initial pencils, which looks different. Um, it's a little scarier looking, <laughs> So, I mean, if you look at you know, Crimson Zeke and Optimus are much happier in this one. In the, the original pencils, they weren't quite as, as happy. So stay tuned for that. And then to go along with those, I also got some prints of, of that. Um, we might have a, a giveaway for one of those. And moving on. I'll um, take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I got you one. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, since it's in the same thing. I met uh, Rob Paulson. I actually met the entire Animaniacs cast and Maurice LaMarche, who is the brain. I did a group photo with them, uh, my wife and son, and I did that. But you don't really get to talk to them. They they really just rush you in, snap the picture, and you're done. So I went to Rob's booth um, to get him to sign this. Yoshi got me this a few year, a couple years ago. Uh, this is a poster done by Keith Tucker, who did storyboards on Animaniacs. And, you know, this is the Warner Brothers and sister as uh, Han, Luke, and Leia from Star Wars. And since I had to pay for the, the autograph, I only got Rob to to do that. But he signed it, which uh, this is great. I wish he didn't do black ink on a dark thing, but it's awesome. I'm going to have that framed. And I got to actually do an interview with, with Brandon from Honcello, who is um, founder and designer. They had, they at Emerald City, um, they first started selling uh, this Ravage pen, which is Ravage in cassette mode. Cool. That it, it's, it looks really great. Um, they're selling this on their website, too. And then um, he also he gave me the Soundwave pen, the nice sparkly eyes. And this Optimus pen. Very nice. So I don't know how in focus that is, but those they I really like these. Um, great guy to talk to. Um, really cool stuff. I can't wait uh, for you guys to see you know, some of the pictures of the booth. Um, their booth was neat because like all the displays for all their um, their pins and and rings and stuff looked like old arcade cabinets for whatever franchise. So, like, they had, like, a Masters of the Universe arcade cabinet-looking thing or Voltron Transformers. So, it just it, it looked really cool. As I said, I met Marv Wolfman 
and I got him to autograph some books. Uh, the first one here, uh, this is uh, Man and Superman. This is a, it, I think he said it took him 10 years to get this published. It was originally going to be put out and then things happened and it just never got made. And then they just put it out. So he, he signed that. He signed this one actually for free. The other ones were five bucks a piece. So I got him to sign, I'll just show you a couple. I got him to sign three books here. Um, Crisis on Infinite Earth, um, number one, let's see, yeah, number one, number eight, where, you know, Flash dies, and uh, a new Teen Titans book I had. Marv Wolfman also worked on, uh, he worked on G1, didn't he? He worked on some of the episode, like the TV episodes, oh, I think. He wrote Yeah, some- but I can't get him to sign, I mean, I guess I could have brought my DVDs, but... No, I, 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 I was just, I was just throwing it out there. I wasn't saying you, you had to get anything signed, but he did. He also He's, was a showrunner on Beast Machines, wasn't he? He wrote, he worked with Bob Skier. He, he and Bob Skier uh, yeah. did the co-show ran or co-wrote it, Beast Machines. It, yeah, but. He's there for the comics. No, I, so. I know, I know, but I just, I'm just trying to inject the little, you know, Transformers you, you relevance. Are, yeah, yeah, that's what you're here for. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have, I got another um, at, at TFCon Chicago last year. I had Thomas Deer do Superman. I, I'm doing this is a all blank pages, so I'm getting artists to do their versions of Superman. Uh, this time I got Buster Moody, who has done work for Ninja Turtles on for IDW, and this is his version of Superman, basically just melting through a wall. Nice. And I think what he did here with um, he has this like thing that he puts over and then like cuts out to do the the shaded area is actually over here. Um, it really looks neat. So I really like that. Yeah. How 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 did he? I mean, that seems like a lot of ink work. I, well, no, it, it's just, it's something he, like, put over the page. He drew it, he put it over the page, and he cut out where he drew. Oh, uh, okay. And then, you know, added, like, the, the the darker shadings down here. So it's a texture. He, he, yes, and <laughs> I, I need to be sure to bring that up with Yoshi. <laughs> it, it, I really like it, though, it, and especially now that you pointed out the texture thing. I, I like it even more. <laughs> <laughs> Correction from number one Derek in the chat. Uh, Marty Eisenberg was the one who worked on uh, Beast Machines with Bob Skier, not Marv Wolfman. Sorry for everyone. <laughs> well, that's, hey, you get corrected. It's a bonus for me and Daryl. <laughs> um, the DC booth was giving away some stuff, so I'm just going to kind of briefly show these. The, some pro- promo versions of some new kids books they have, Super Sons and Mara. Promo version of Batman, White Knight. Shazam uh, by Jeff Johns, Sandman. And then there was Chicago Area Libraries had a booth, and one of the things they had was this neat thing. Um, it's a behind-the-scenes version of, uh, I don't know what number one Amazing Spider-Man this is, because they the current The books. current one. It is? Uh, Nick Spencer? Yeah. So it, it's neat, because it's all, like, pencils and stuff, but then it goes into... Um, It'll show you like some work in progress pages and how it was put together. So it's just really cool. Mm-hmm. That came out uh, before the number one issue came out. So oh, it did? that's uh, probably a year old now. But uh, well, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice that they gave it uh, gave it away because it, it came to the comic shops. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a neat behind the scenes look. Um, I got stickers uh, from uh, Robots with Coffee, Paul. Um, it's weird, you know, this massive convention, tons of people. And then suddenly I'll like hear someone calling my name hmm. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know, it, it's, he it, it just happened to see me. And then he introduced me to Tim Spencer, who's done work for DC and image and, uh, devils do transformers, GI Joe crossover. So I got to talk with him too. Isn't that Tim, Tim Seeley or sorry, Tim Seeley, Nick Spencer got stuck in my head. Um, let's see. I think that is everything except for this last thing that I have. I got a Transformers loot box from, oh, there, from the Imaginarium, it's what, ImaginariumAntiques.com. They are based out of Omaha. They had, it was really neat because 
you normally you see the loot boxes and they're just regular big boxes. They had like five dollar ones that were in like Chinese takeout boxes, uh, ten dollar ones that I think were in bigger takeout boxes, and then this is a donut box. This is a twenty dollar loot kit or loot box. It's you know they were all you know DIY stuff, but I have not opened this yet. I've been sitting on it for a week, so I have no idea what's in here. There is some weight to it. They are, you know, he says that they buy collections or he buys storage units, and there might be some new stuff in here. There might be some old stuff. It's just a mix. There might be comics. Who knows? So There's gold in them there boxes. Well, hopefully not gold plastic. <laughs> So. Suspense. Yeah. All right. Oh, there are comics in here. All right. Killing, killing is... joke, Megatron number one. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be funny, um, Daryl. You're gonna have to help me. That's Croc. Look up, Croc. Uh, looks yep. like. Kill separated, but looks like that was supposed to happen. Titan's return. There's a, there's a gun here, so that's cool. We got a little Mr. Potato Head Bumblebee. It'll be good for the kid. Goes with your Mr. Potato Head Optimus. Well, my Optimus is bigger. This is a, a Rescue so Bots in, branded. So it's in scale. This is a, a Cyberverse Windblade. I actually saw this in the store today. And then... I got some comics here. Bagged and boarded? Bagged and boarded. Holy nice. shit. Nice. IDW number one, Mike Costa, Don Figueroa. Hey, on look Transformers at that. Transformers ongoing. It's Charles' mm-hmm. favorite. Mm. <laughs> Dreamwave. These are out of order. Oh. Hold on. All right. Dreamwave, <laughs> Transformers number zero. Ooh. I think I, I have some of these. Um, number... Number one, mm-hmm. Dreamwave. Mm-hmm. Which number, number one? There were so many. This was Dreamwave number one. Vo- yeah. Volume uh, one, number one, probably. Volume one, number one. This is, yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure this is volume one. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> number Issue two. Oh, you got the whole run? No. Goes to six. You can complete More within it. within the Dark Ages, oh. number five. Okay. And then Transformers Armada number eight. Mm. Mm. So I think for twenty dollars, not a bad box. Nope. So the croc's worth about ten, so there yeah. you go. The the weight of it clearly is coming from the comics. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's it's something I, w- I would I would definitely do again. So that is everything I have, at least that I could think of, <laughs> of grabbing. Um, I thought about pulling out my big Geico bag and just pulling the stuff out from there, but I, I thought better of it. Geico doesn't sponsor the show. We can't give them free advertising. They, they don't, but, but I did try to get an interview with the big Geico. He, he was not talking. There was a picture in the video. <laughs> but that, that's all, all I got. This all right. Well, that'll do it for Trips to the Store. All right, we're back from our trips to the store, and let's finish up the show with some convention news. All right, uh, one thing here in convention news: um, the Cybefest Northwest registration is now live. Uh, this is a convention in Kent, Washington. Uh, we keep trying to get Yoshi to go. Uh, I think he says that Washington is a bigger state than we realize, but we don't believe him. But um, it will be at the Kent Commons Community Center. It will be July 27th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., so it's just a one-day thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure you will see friend of the show, Mike Seibert, there, who we've met at TFCon Chicago last year. But uh, if you want to register, it looks like it's $25 for a family of two adults and two to five children, or uh, adults... Non-dealers, $10. Children are $5. Under four are free. 
check it out. We'll have a link to the show notes. And if you're in the area, looks like it'll be a good time. We've, they've been going for a few years now. One of these days, we'll get Yoshi out there. Or not. <laughs> I think it's up to that him. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I guess that brings us to the end of the show. Uh, we do have... Uh, a particular question from uh, our, one of our donations, Robin, but it's, it's a bit involved. We might need to get to it next week, uh, or we might just answer directly. Um, we'll see. But or Robin, both. we did get your, your, uh, your question, so we'll try to help you out uh, as soon as we can. So look forward to that. All right. Uh, so that's it, everyone. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Uh, I'm not reading this whole intro, Daryl. It's too long. What are you talking I'm about? It's not long. It. It's not too long. It's it's great. <laughs> That's a great one. It's not too long at all. Uh, I lost connection for a while there. That's all he's got this week, Charles. Yeah, that's all I got this week. Wrap okay. it up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that, that's uh, that's uh, more incest than uh, than the actual movie. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, <laughs> let's not let's not talk about that. <laughs> about that.